Of course, uh, the GDP numbers remain top as burning economic issues. And we have Nosike Nwajide, one of the research analysts with Financial Derivatives Company, who joins me now to talk through the domestic commodities market. Nosike, good morning. Now, how would you relate the latest GDP figure to the domestic commodities space? Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not where we want to be, but we're happy to be. But we are, I mean, the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan said we'd be having GDP growth of 7% by 2020. Um, by the look of things, we, we, were, we are unlikely to get there. I mean, 2.27% growth uh, with 1.91 the year before and less than 1% uh, the year before that is it's a, it's positive growth. There's momentum on the uh, economic recovery growth path. Um, at 2.27%, uh, it's uh, above uh, what the IMF predicted um, or estimated Nigeria's uh, growth would be in uh, 2019. But the, it's still, oil is still hugely reliant on, uh, I mean, growth is still hugely reliant on oil. And uh, oil production was above 2 million barrels in Q4 of uh, 2019. But we expect that... Uh, oil production will fall as uh, Nigeria aligns to its um, OPEC quota, quota of 1.78 million barrels a day in Q1. So we, we can't expect that much uh, thrust from oil in uh, the coming quarters, as long as uh, OPEC is still, is still looking for ways to prop up oil prices. But then again, um, there was uh, good news from uh, the finance and insurance sector. There was good news from the manufacturing and the agri sectors. These sectors, um, the biggest gainers, if you will. Uh, finance and insurance grew by close to about around 20%. Uh, you can attribute that to the CBN's policies in recent time. It's unorthodox policies in recent time. And um, it's one of those has been the loan to deficit ratio, ratio that is at 65% at the moment. Um, we expect that this, because um, the LDR policy has um, forced interest rates down. We expect that in the coming, coming quarters, it would interest rates would be just as low as they were in Q4 2019, and it would continue to boost the lending across the economy. One of the huge uh, beneficiaries of the lending policy has been the manufacturing sector. Also, the borders were closed, so you know you had um, some of the things that you would ordinarily import or uh, smuggle, smuggle or import across the borders. They were produced locally. So this this were the things that really uh, boosted the manufacturing and the finance and insurance sector. And the non-oil sector GDP accounted for 91.22% in 2019. Now, what does this tell us when we realize that that sector contributes about 50% to revenue and less than 20% to foreign exchange earnings? Shouldn't we be worried about this? Uh, yes, we should. Um, it's, um, you know, the rhetoric about diversifying the economy over the years, this just reinforces that re rhetoric. The government needs to do do more and say less. There needs to be, obviously, a structural impediment to GDP growth. There are the constraints of infrastructure, constraints of, uh, you know, power, logistics, and, you know, companies have to contend with these constraints to, to output. As soon as we, I mean, it's, it's not something that can happen in the short term. As soon as we sort them out in the medium, longer term, investments in infrastructure, then we can start to be more competitive. And as we become more competitive, um, we can... We can produce, we can have more sectors, not just the manufacturing and the agri sector or finance sector. We can have even entertainment and um, trade. Trade was one of the uh, sectors that uh, recorded negative growth um, over, the, over the quarter. So we, we need to diversify the economy. The reliance on oil has put us in dire straits at the moment. We have uh, uh, the OPEC cuts that are looming. Um, see another 600,000 barrels of oil taking off the markets, Nigeria, we may have to contend with additional cuts. So our forex earnings will be impacted. These forex earnings, I mean, uh, oil accounts for close over 80% of Nigeria's forex earnings, but its uh, contribution to GDP is less than 10%, as you rightly said. Uh, for, for diversification, obviously, oil at the moment is where we get the forex, is our number one source of forex earnings. So we, we are constrained at the moment by, there's a cap on outputs. And there's the constraint of price, which, I mean, it's, it's funny because in order to boost prices, we might need to cut output even further. But at the moment, our hands are tied, and that's our only source of forex revenue. The government needs to do more to diversify its revenue sources and its sources of foreign exchange. 
Well, let's look at the oil sector performance now. That came in at 8.78% in 2019. Is this something also to worry about given the strategic nature of the sector? Uh, I don't know if the, the, the word is worry, but I mean, we, right now we expect that um, oil production will trend lower because uh, at, in Q4, Nigeria was producing above 2 million barrels and according to OPEC standards, that's um, cheating on your quota. We would uh, need to, our output to trend lower to about 1.78 million barrels this quarter by, by sometime in March, we should be complying with the OPEC quota, and there's the possibility that Nigeria will be asked to cut even further. So the oil, oil production is going to fall. I mean, that we know for sure. But what we, what we would lose in outputs, we hope to, we hope to prop oil, OPEC hopes to prop oil prices up, and ho hopefully what we lose in terms of output, we gain in terms of price. So that, you know, when you net it out, you, the higher price would boost uh, forex revenues and... Um, Obviously, the, the price doesn't matter as a, when, when uh, the MBS is computing um, the contribution of the oil sector to GDP, it's the production. So in the next, for Q1 uh, 2020, we expect the contribution of uh, the oil sector to fall. Research analyst at the financial derivatives company, Nosike Mwajide, thanks for your time. Mm.